Hey, yeah. hey. So, David Lennon, I'm here with Roe Khan. He's an expert Hello. life coach and counsellor. Now, I don't know about you, but I hear a lot of questions about life coaching. What is life coaching? And, and let's be honest here, people do snicker um, a fair bit at networking events about life coaching and who are you to tell me how to run my life and what does a life coaching do? So I'm going to put you on the spot. This is our opportunity to find out what is what is life coaching? I, I mean, want to hear it from, well, from you. Well, David, thanks for asking because <laughs> I do, you know, I do know all about that snickering and slacking a whole bunch of snickers. That's how much snickering is going on there. Yeah. Uh, look, you know, I'll tell you what life coaching isn't. Life coaching isn't about giving advice. We're not in the business of giving advice. A mentor gives advice. A mentor has been there and done that and you go to a mentor to ask for advice because they've been through something. A life coach is about guiding, it's about empowering, it's about listening, it's about sitting with someone and saying, listen, you know, what's important to you? What's important to you in life? What are your goals? Uh, where do you want to get to? And you help them with clarity and direction. That's what we're all about, really. But I can sit with a friend and talk about my goals. And yes, absolutely, yeah. No, true, but we, you know, we were trained in the art of questioning. There's definitely an art in the way you ask the questions. So, you, so you're going to ask different questions? I'm going to ask different questions that will get you thinking in a different way. They'll get you thinking in a positive way. It's also a very positive field. You know, we're trying to get you thinking in a positive way about your life and about yourself. Y but yourself what's that going But that's just that kind of airy-fairy, think positive. But what is it really about? What is it really going to do? I mean, what... It's going to motivate you to get your life into action. It's going to motivate you by setting small goals and uh, get you on your way into things that you like. And then as you get these small goals, you'll see that you've achieved them and you'll build on your confidence and then you'll start realizing that you can do a lot more than, than you think you can. We, we limit ourselves quite a lot with our beliefs. You might have heard about limiting beliefs or assumptions. And these assumptions and beliefs stop us from becoming the, yeah. the best that we can be. Okay. Uh, and so we, we're really in the business of addressing those limiting beliefs making you aware of them and these assumptions you make about yourself in the world and then from that you know you, you squash them and you look at them and you sort of break through them uh, and then you take actions towards what we call you know a rich and meaningful life i yeah, don't mean rich okay. uh, financially it's nice to be rich financially but for humans it's important to be happy and fulfilled and that's the light that's what we're trying to do moving towards a rich and meaningful life yeah okay so rather than a friend just uh, asking you questions and saying, yeah, that was bad, there's a shame that happened, or why did yeah. you do that, why don't you do it differently? So you're saying, if you have the person get into a positive mind step, mm -hmm. and this is not all you do, but by helping them get into a more positive mind step, mm -hmm. they start to see more opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying you start with smaller steps, so bite-sized pieces, and then realizing, hey, that felt good, I did that. I do a bit more, I yeah. felt good, I do a bit more. Because I know when you get stuck, and geez, we all get stuck, and mm. and you can't see the wood through the trees, and you don't know mm -hmm. how to get out into a positive mindset to see any solutions. Yeah. I mean, you just can't see solutions. You're just like, freaking, I'm just on overload. Yeah, especially if you're stressed, you know, and I'm, I'm a stress management expert, which we can talk about as well, if you like. Yeah, know, especially coming up to the end of the year, um, there's a lot of stuff happening, a lot of pressure on work, a lot of social functions. So let's, let's tap into that after this, but you were saying. Yeah, yeah but looking at also about a friend, you know, sometimes we don't feel comfortable talking to our friends or family members. Sometimes we don't want to burden them. Sometimes we don't want to uh, put too much pressure on them. Or we, we just don't like their, don't like them because they give us advice. And, you know, one thing that I know is, is giving advice to someone or getting advice, it, it can be, it can have its place. But it can feel disempowered. You, know, you can feel disempowered getting advice from people, uh, and it's important. It's really important uh, to sit with someone and to listen and to ask those really strategic questions so that they can come up with the answers themselves. So, how is this different than counselling or going to a psychologist? I mean, mm -hmm. why wouldn't I just go to a psychiatrist or a psychologist? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, a psychiatrist is a doctor, is a, is a professional doctor that prescribes medication for people with mental illness. Um, I think it is similar to counselling, you know, uh, life coaching. You're a, sorry, you're a counsellor yeah. as well, you're a qualified. Yeah. I'm a qualified counsellor and i, I got to say, the more, the more I've been doing this, the more I realise that the two fields are more aligned than we think. Like for example, uh, strengths-based counselling and solution-focused counselling, which are just names of counselling uh, models, are very similar to life coaching. 
Uh, but I think, you know, in, in the movies, when we think about therapy and psychology, it's like sitting on the couch and tell me about your mother and things like that. Mm. And that's not what we do. You know, we're in life coaching, we don't tend to go backwards too much. We don't tend to go uh, into the past and, right. and your upbringing and childhood. Right. We, we, we look at the beliefs that, that that childhood brought to you, but we're not necessarily looking to, to delve in and to focus on that. So what sort what about of today and the future? So what would a session look like then, say the first session, what do you kind of do? Well it's interesting because I, I do sessions out here in Alder Park, so one of the greatest things about... What, in front of people? What, what's that? You mean coaching sessions in front of other people? Yeah, well we're going for a walk, so we're, we're just moving along, doing our own thing. Oh, so and you do the walking? Yeah, I do a walking coaching session out in nature and, and we know that uh, you know there's a lot of evidence for being in nature and going for a walk, that sort of stuff's really, really good for your mental health and some people feel more comfortable opening up like that others don't others don't others like the room and that's fine as well right. um, but you know a lot of them do take to this and you also you get a bit of exercise in you know and that's that's a stress management strategy right there so we go for a walk and I'd ask you what are you looking to get you know what are the goals for the session what are you looking to get what's important to you and what, what might be some goals that people typically yeah, so have somebody might say to me you know I'd like to progress in my career or I'd like to lose some weight uh, we look at the areas of life. Which area of your life do you want to work on? Some so let's say career. Career, okay. So I'd say to you, what's important to you? Where, where, where would you want to get to? What would be um, you know, a, a version of success for you? Because so everyone's got a different version of success. That's the interesting, that's what keeps our jobs so interesting. Right. There isn't just a, a rule book that says, oh, hang on, you're successful, you're not successful. Uh, yeah, so, so what I might want to achieve is totally different than yeah. Yeah, something else. And, um, that, and that's the stuff of the heart, you know? Is that the right mm. side? Yeah, left side. <laughs> that's the stuff of the heart, you know? You want to get to what's important to someone, what's in their heart, what's, what would, would get them jumping out of bed. So then, okay, that's all well and good. I want that. Well, then what are you going to do? Then we're going to ask a whole bunch of questions. What's, what's important to you in life? What are the barriers? What are the things stopping you? That's where we get to the limiting beliefs. And I, I'm trained in listening out for those beliefs. Somebody might say, yeah, well, I really want to be a, uh, I don't know, a sports person, but uh, I can't do it. And then I challenge, I say, well, what evidence do you have that you can't do it? How do you know that you can't do it? Um, is, and how important is it to you? It's about this evaluation. You know, like I might even do a scale of one to 10. How important out of 10 mm. is it for you to do that sport? Is it really, really important to you? And they might say five. And then I'd say, well, eh, five. And then we have these should goals. I really should be doing things. Yeah. Yeah, and then we have yeah. to we have to sift out the shoulds. Yeah? yeah, it's the joke we say we're shooting all over the place. You know, <laughs> so you got to watch out for that shooting. You know, and so uh, we shouldn't should. We shouldn't should. But we what could. should we do? We could. We'll say could. Being saying could, replacing the shoulds with coulds, uh, takes so the pressure off. So that's one tip. I should lose. Watch those shoulds when we're saying should. Hundred percent. I should lose weight. Uh, I could lose weight. Yeah, it takes no, a bit should, of pressure. I should call more people this week. Oh, you could uh, call more people this week. Yeah, I could if I wanted to. Yeah, and you could also So that, that empowers me more than just... Constant. It takes pressure off. Should is an awful word that puts a lot of high expectations on ourselves. A lot of people beat themselves up. I see that all the time in my sessions. Um, and sometimes that can be a barrier in itself. Beating yourself up, the shoulds. You get really caught up. Like you said, you can't see the forest from the trees. You're all, all, sort of all over the place. Um, and th those shoulds really get in the way. And they're also their goals from, the, from expectations that we put on ourselves from other people or, yeah, you know, from sure. our friends or family sure. or upbringing or yeah, society, you know. So I want to get to what's important to you, what's in the heart. Right. So the real core values that I want to achieve. Mm. So how long is that sort of session then, walking? Or, yeah, I mean, so we get, you know, vary, we or? do like 40 to, 40 to 50 minutes and we also do a bit of mindfulness and mindfulness is a, is a strategy in itself to help you see things a bit clearer. Mindfulness, just explained quickly, is all about getting into the here and the now. You can't control the past because it's been and gone and we can't really control the future. We can set goals but we can't control what really happens. Life doesn't always go to plan. So we've only got the here and the now. And what we do is we sit in this beautiful setting right here mm. and we, we just observe. We observe what we can see, hear, that, feel and think. How's that going to help me? It's going to get you into a more calmer and focused place. And that's, that's, that's the, the key here. Uh, it's also very evidence-based, the mindfulness stuff around stress and yeah. anxiety, depression, sadness, anger. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, so if, if we say, okay, I want, you know, I want to achieve A, B and C, but, my, but what gets in the way, I'm stressed. Boom, let's do some mindfulness. Yeah. And then you'll feel more relaxed. So then we can go yeah. and set those goals from a calmer place yeah. rather than a place where you're a bit yeah. 
and I've done a, a week retreat in Bali on oh, mindfulness, wow. and I was I was skeptical, but I was blown away. Yeah. With how what we focus on dictates our feelings, That's and so it. just by choosing what we're focusing on, yeah, we'll just totally change. I either, you know, have you got half, half glass half full or half? Yeah. Full? Um, and, and, and also, and also, Dave, you know, it's really, um, it's, you don't have to go to Bali, for example. It's, uh, yeah. you can do it in your everyday life. And, and as one of my biggest passions, what's important to me is to empower. And so I teach people how to do this. And then I get them to go away and do it themselves. And then the next session, we check in with each other and we keep doing it. Like the gym, you know, you want to work on some muscles, you want to lose some weight, you want to work on conditioning, or, or um, you want to do more cardio. It's, it's a muscle that you work on, this mindfulness. Yeah? And you, the more you practice, the better. And it, it only takes five or 10 minutes. And the beautiful thing about it is we can all do it. Because we're all little kids once. And little yeah. kids, if you look at little kids, they see the world through their senses. And yeah. they don't know how to think yet. They're not there yet. They're not worrying about the phone and the emails. Or the, the bills oh, or finances. God. Or what will so-and-so think of me. Those were yeah. nice days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so we're adults, so we can't do that, but we can we can get into the moment, at least on a small level, and that really helps. Okay, cool. Mm. So that, that gives me an idea of what you do. Now we're in that season coming up for the end of the year. A lot of extra pressure perhaps in work. There's all these social functions where we may drink a bit too much and make fools of ourselves and mm -hmm. danger our job. <laughs> <laughs> and as a business coach, I love this time of year because it's a great time to plan for next year and think sure. what we could do better sure. so from a life coaching point of view what's some typical examples of so give us some real tips not some airy fairy mm -hmm. bullshit yeah feel good stuff what some really good tips that we could perhaps use okay now. so obviously it's a stressful time of the year I mean let's face it a lot of people are, are stressing and worrying about gifts and getting together with people and family sometimes the concept of family can be a, a trigger for stress in the first place which is a <laughs> which is an, so, you know, and mixed with other emotions as well uh, so I guess you know some of the main tips really is around how do you manage your stress but how do you look after yourself as well and so I'll try and give us these good real ones and not be very fair right, so talk to that mic okay so here, the, the most the most important thing here uh, is you know some people are not talkers you know I actually asked that question are you a talker do you like to talk about your feelings or when things get a bit tough and people who aren't talkers that's okay it's perfectly fine you know you can come talk to someone like me if you like but on the day-to-day -day life it's good to write things down. Okay, now there's two types of writing things down. The first one is journaling, just like maybe we were little kids and we used to write journals, not everyone, and you used to just write your everyday thoughts and feelings. That can be effective. But what's I know that, what's that gonna do? It's gonna get things out, out of your head and off your chest and it, it's a it's a it's a cathartic exercise to especially if you're feeling stressed and overwhelmed, especially if things are a bit too much for you. Yeah. It's a good exercise to get out of you into the into then and later on you can look at it. Uh, but the second one, which I, I, I personally love to give this out as, as homework, I suppose, to my clients, is writing. It's writing to get things off your chest, you know, especially if you're really angry. Like you could write an angry letter to someone or you could write um, all about your stresses. And, you know, for example, family, we sometimes, do, we sometimes are angry at family members, but we don't want to tell them. So uh, one of the things I say is well, write, write it down, not for them, for you privately, and then rip it up you know, rip it up and right. throw it out and burn it. It's very cathartic. Now burn it safely. Yeah, we don't want any uh, any fires, you know. No urchinists, uh, rub it on, encourage just fires. <laughs> burn, burn it and throw it in their house. <laughs> yeah, throw it in their house. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, so writing things down. Now when you, when you have trouble sleeping sometimes or really stressed, this is another fantastic tool. You've got lots of worries, lots of worries, lots of things in your head, and your, your mind is you know, capturing your attention. And you can write it out and just say, Listen, mind, thank you for all this. I've written it down. I'm putting it next to my bedside. And tomorrow, I'll, I'll, ch I'll check it out. And sometimes that really works. It really takes the pressure off yourself. Yeah, I find that absolutely mm. amazing. And I find that same with decision making. And, and what I kind of realized is we've got this working memory, it's like RAM in the computer. Yes. And, and you, can, you can only handle so much. Yes. But getting down on paper allows the brain frees up more RAM to work on other things and solve other problems. Absolutely. So I, 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 and you don't have to write a lot, do you? No. No, you don't have to be paragraphs. You can write a just sentence. Just a couple yeah, of notes, or even a list. Whatever yeah. you want. It's up to you. You know, just whatever, whatever that thought is in your head or whatever's going on there. Yeah. Put okay. it down on paper. Right? Cool. So there's one. Now, okay. anything else? Yes. That's, uh... These things right here. All right. These smartphones. Okay. 
these smartphones can cause a lot of smart. stress. They're not smart, <laughs> all right? They cause a lot of stress. So here's the thing. In the last 10 years, psychology has discovered uh, that um, smartphones and other types of screens, iPads and uh, any any type of uh, device. We should call them stress phones. Stress phones, smartphone. right? Because yeah. they cause a lot of stress. The reason they cause stress is two reasons. One is the blue light. So they emit a blue light, same like from a TV. And this blue light captures your attention. This blue light really um, says to you, hey, stay awake. And you know, especially late at night, we're all watching Netflix on our phones and yeah. can't get to sleep and wonder why. Yeah, okay. It's because we're watching, you know? Uh, and the other thing is um, all the notifications, the Facebook and the Instagram and the email and then this and that. It's always like, oh, hang on, let's have a look, let's have a look, let's have a look. When right. are you going to get time? Like we said yeah. about the, 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 the RAM and all. When we got time to just be and just chill and just sit. Yeah. And you know, so I advise people to get outside into nature and don't take your phone. Go for a walk. Ten minutes is fine. Ten minutes in nature with these rules. No phones, no coffees, no cigarettes. Okay. okay. So there's three rules. All right. That's good. Um, third? Third tip for stress management. You in know, this lit busy time. Yeah. What's, or any particular topics? I mean, I, I'm really into self-care. I know it sounds airy fair, but self-care really indicates that you get got to look after yourself. There's a part of us that beats ourselves up and we need to really look after ourselves. So when I think self-care, do activities that relax you, okay? Now, I speak to Netflix. Some, Netflix. In bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Netflix in bed. If right. you can fall asleep, that's fine. Right, but if, okay. if it becomes a problem... Right, so it's yeah. not relaxing. It's not yeah, relaxing. Okay. And yeah, you, I'm not saying don't watch AMA, I watch Netflix, you know? Uh, but yeah. maybe not in bed, and maybe not an hour before you go to sleep. Right, okay. Um, I talk to all sorts of people and they talk about massage, you know, massage is a good one or yeah. going away on holidays, you take a break, have you, have you gone away yet, you know, um, some people, a lot of Australians don't take holidays, they don't take the annual leave, which is a, it's a worry really, and, you know, you need time for yourself to recoup, it's, it's like a, a car, you got to refuel, you know, um, yeah. so all sorts of things, but putting that aside, the little things that you can do, um, I'm not going to talk exercise and nutrition because that stuff's obvious, uh, but the things that put a smile on your face. You know, some people talk about gardening mm. and they just say, I haven't got around to it. Well, get around to it. You know, that really, really yeah. uh, it's, it's that stuff really, really means something to you. It's a meaningful activity and it'll make you feel better. Gardening anyway is mindfulness, really. You just in the, you're yeah. focusing on the garden. Um, photography. Frigging weeds, frigging weeds, yeah. frigging, <laughs> frigging weeds. Sorry, weeds. Get the, the oh. anger out. And I'm always, <laughs> and I'm always <laughs> apologizing when I got to pull a weed out. Yeah. Right? But yeah, so there's gardening, there'd be pets, there'd be. I don't know when yeah. the kids are very rough. Kids, well, <laughs> kids can be and they can't be. It depends. They can also cause stress. Yeah. Uh, so you know, I'm thinking about some more clients. Said photography. I mean, I love music. I love playing music. Listening to music. Uh, people have hobbies. What's your hobby? What's your hobby? What's something that you used to love to do when you were younger and you just haven't got a chance to do it for whatever reason? So one of the things you might do then, I'm imagining, is look, ask somebody how many of these things they're doing in their life right now, mm -hmm. and then you'd help them set some goals on saying. Well, how about adding 20 minutes of music this week yes, or something like that? In or, the empowering way, they, they, they come up with these, with these goals and how often and how, because we, we want them to succeed. So realistically, within your time frame, can you, I'll ask, can you include gardening, for example? Yeah, well, I and could do maybe 15 minutes. 15 minutes on what day? Um, probably do it in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'll pick like midweek maybe okay yeah like a Wednesday and all right and say right before I get started and look at the iPad or the laptop yeah I'll do okay. 15 minutes okay and here's the question the, the million dollar question will that activity move you towards a more fulfilling life or away from a fulfilling life well, I guess it moved me a bit okay good it would, we uh, want a bit we don't want uh, you know from zero to a hundred so do how we? do I yeah how do I not then think well, there's so much more gardening I need to do. I only manage 15, 20 minutes. How do I deal with that? Belief? So this is the stuff about being kind to yourself and doing it slowly, slowly. Like for example, you know, I'm doing a training program with Jim, which you'll meet later, and he's not getting me to go and do 200 push-ups, you know, or 1,000 push-ups. You know, we're building it up. It's the same sort of thing with Richard mm, okay. Meaningful Life Business. So don't, so Small. don't beat myself up for doing only 15 minutes yeah. when I know there's an hour of gardening that needs to be done. I just but hang on, is this a should? Does that sounds like a should goal, or is this a meaningful yeah, goal? Yeah, I'm doing too? a should. Yeah, is that a should? I should, oh, do, an I should hour. do the garden, or is the gardening in your heart is a meaningful activity for you, David? No, it's a, it's a friggin. It's, okay, well, give me another one then. What's one that really is 
puts a smile on your face, relaxes you. What's an activity? Oh, getting in the sea. Yeah, getting in, having a snorkel in the sea. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. You yeah. live by the beach? Yep. Yeah, so could you get to the sea with a snorkel at some point? I went in week, yesterday, so that was good. Good. Um, so you're already doing some meaningful stuff. But awesome. But again, it's... Uh, yeah, it's that battle of I should be doing other things or mm, I can't mm. afford. What do we do with shoulds? What do, we, what do we say about shoulds? What's the little tip with shoulds? Could. You could be doing other things, but you could also not. And you're doing the best you can with what you have. I did feel energized and I'm more effective afterwards. How important is it to you to get into the sea and do snorkeling out of 10? Eight. Eight. So it's pretty important. Yeah. How important, absolutely. How important is gardening? Especially just, now. Just curiously. Oh, no, that's a bit of. Four. Okay, well that's a should go, my friend. I do enjoy it, yeah. yeah. Okay, even though I thought... So there's a good example of how a life coach helps you realise that what you've been thinking is what you want to do is actually not what you already want to do. Yeah, you've got so, to sift out those should goals, yeah. So I can see the value there, that's yeah. that's great. So self so going back to the sea, so for Dave, you know, getting into the sea and snorkeling is a really meaningful activity. Again, I love it, it's different for everyone, you know. I had a client the other day and it, it was going to live music taking photography. And that was her thing, okay? And I, for me, that you know, I like live music, but that doesn't do it for me. And it might not do it for you, but it does it for her. And I asked her the same question, out of 10, how important is this to you? And you can do this question yourself as well. Out of 10, how important is this activity? Is it meaningful to me? Is it fulfilling? Yeah, you, yeah. you can do this stuff yourself to some degree as well. Yeah, that would be great to make a list of things that you think might put a smile on your face and then saying, well, out of 10, mm. how important are they? Yeah. And going, no, nope, not that one, not one, realizing... And, and a good okay. and a good a good indicator is if it's over seven, then we know it's important. If it's less, then eh, I don't know. I'm not okay. really into it. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Rowie. No worries. That's really. I think we've uh, we've covered some really good points there. Yes. The shoulds should be coulds and making lists and and do something for yourself. Times, yeah, yeah. Getting be, out in nature. Yeah, nature. And, 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 and mind things. If you want to come and hang out, you know, it's here we are, Albert Park. It's beautiful out here. And just get get out into nature. I, I'm a big fan of that. I think that and, always works. And what's the walking program you run? It's called Take a Step Coaching, and uh, we go for a walk around Albert Park or St Kilda Beach or or a park near you if it's if it's uh, suitable. Um, and uh, you can come for a 30 minute free if you want to come and try and try it out. You know, um, and basically, yeah, we'd go. We, we'd do this sort of stuff and exactly exactly what I did here with, with Dave and uh, we talk about strategies and tips so, so you're getting double whammy so you're getting out in nature and then you're also getting the coaching combined so it's yeah it's I think you're getting a uh, quadruple whammy because you're walking and you're talking yeah. and you're in nature and you and you do mindfulness and you get coached so for awesome. me it's even five things uh, yeah but, no, uh, that's, that's good that's yeah. good so we'll put the uh, the website address on the screen and yes, thank um, you yeah so yeah, crazy. so you know, last message is before Christmas, overwhelming time, really important to look after yourself so you can be more resilient in the face of stress. Uh, you know, stress is normal and natural, but it can be quite full on. So don't forget to do some of these things. And if you need to get in touch, and I'll give you a couple more tips, I'd be happy to. Right.